Hey guys, quick announcement before we begin. We're getting really close to 200k subscribers. So if you enjoy the videos that I make, hit that subscribe button, help us get to 200k a lot sooner. Thank you. Now on to the video. This is the story of Singapore Airlines Flight 836. On the 23rd of May 2015, an Airbus A330 was on a flight from Singapore to Shanghai. The plane that was making the flight today, 9 Victor Sierra Sierra Foxtrot, was a brand new A330. The airline had only taken delivery of the plane at the end of March that year, so the plane wasn't even two months old when it took off for Shanghai. The plane takes off and everything is going well. Soon the plane closes in on China. Specifically, when the plane was 130 nautical miles southeast of Hong Kong, the A330 was cruising at 39,000 feet. As the plane was cruising on a heading of 028 degrees, the pilots turned to their weather radar and they saw that they had some weather in the way. To avoid the weather system, the pilots decided to divert to the right to avoid the weather cells. So the pilots talked to ATC and then they got a new heading of 080 degrees. As they vectored away, the pilots were working on a way to avoid the absolute worst of the weather that was now in their way. Now they wanted to turn to the left to 020 degrees, so the controller let them do that. The pilots knew that they'd be in for a rough ride, so they turned on the seatbelt sign and made an announcement over the PA. They then set the speed of the plane to 0.78 Mach, which is the turbulence penetration speed that's set by Airbus. Just to be extra safe, the pilots also turned on the anti-ice system, and they selected continuous ignition on both engines. These pilots had prepped the plane as best as they could, and now all they had to do was push through the zone of turbulence. As the plane entered the weather cell, the engines on the plane started to surge. The plane's Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitoring System, or the ECAM, lit up with error messages. Engine 2 was going through a few surges. The ECAM then gave the pilots a list of things that they needed to do to get the situation under control. They had to pull back engine number 2 all the way from cruise power back to idle power. But as the crew were going through that list, they had a new problem to deal with. Engine number 1 was now surging. The ECAM now gave them a helpful list of actions that the pilots had to do on top of the actions that they already had to do. But we know what the list would say. Shut engine number one down. This would mean that an A330 with 192 people on board would have barely any power. Now the pilots had a choice. Keep one of the engines running and risk damaging it, or shut both engines down and hope for the best. With the left-hand engine surging, the pilot shut engine number one down. With engine number two at idle and engine number one shut down, the plane could no longer keep station at 39,000 feet. So the plane started to slowly lose altitude. They were trying to stabilize the plane at 26,000 feet. The pilots knew that they had to land this plane as soon as possible. They had options to divert. The airports closest to them were Hong Kong and Guangzhou, but neither of those airports were easily reachable. To get to those airports, the pilots had to fly through another storm cell, and they really didn't want to do that. The pilots decided to stick it out, and within some time, the plane was getting close to Xiamen. At this time, the flight crew was trying to figure out what was working and what wasn't on their plane. They were on the phone with engineers on the ground at Shanghai to see what the best course of action was. As all of this was unfolding, the pilots were trying to get engine number one, the engine on the left-hand side of the plane, going again. As all of this happened, the A330 had been losing altitude. Engine number one was shut down and engine number two was at idle. Flight 836 was slowly starting to slip towards the cold waters of the South China Sea. As the plane was at 26,000 feet, the pilots managed to get engine number one back online. Power was cautiously restored to engine number two. The A330 now had both of its engines back and the pilots hoped that whatever was going wrong with the engines didn't crop up for the rest of the flight. Having gotten both of their engines back, and with their nearest airports being behind a wall of bad weather, the pilots of flight A36 decided to press on to Shanghai. As the plane approached its destination, the pilots brought the plane lower and slowed it down. The pilots did everything that they could to make sure that the problems that they had before didn't crop up during the landing. Losing power on final approach would pretty much doom the plane, but nothing of that sort happened. Flight A36 made an uneventful landing at Shanghai. As soon as the passengers were deboarded from the airplane, engineers got to work trying to figure out why both engines on a modern passenger airliner would have problems at the exact same time. 
Jet engines have gotten so reliable that two engines on the same plane having issues at the same time is almost unheard of, unless both engines somehow have the same problem as their root cause. Think things along the lines of a contaminated fuel supply or something like that. On the ground, the engineers subjected the engines to a battery of tests trying to figure out what had happened to them. The first thing that they tried was a bore scope inspection, and that turned up nothing on both engines. They then tried a full authority digital engine control test, and the engine passed those tests with flying colors. They also checked the magnetic chip detectors in the engines to see if there was any buildup. You see, if some part of the engine is wearing away faster than usual, then metal chips are introduced into the oil stream, and the magnetic chip detector, as the name suggests, detects those chips. But in this case, the detectors were clean. Nothing in the engine was experiencing any more wear than usual. They then decided to run the engine on the ground and to carry out the high-pressure compressor surge margin acceptance test. Wow, that's a mouthful. But the engines passed those tests with no issues whatsoever. The engines were performing as per usual no matter what the engineers threw at them. With the engines in pretty okay shape, they decided to ferry the plane back to Singapore where more thorough testing could be done to find what really went wrong with the engines. Once in Singapore, the plane could technically be released back into service if they replaced both the engines with newer ones. But Singapore Airlines was hesitant to do that because they had a policy against twin engine airplanes having two brand new engines after a swap. So it was decided that engine number one would be taken off of the airplane and then sent to an overhaul facility where it would be stripped down and studied extensively. As they were tearing the engine down, they started to find this gray colored dust deep in the engine. Specifically, on the intermediate pressure compressor, the intermediate pressure turbine, and the high pressure turbine. They found out that the dust was composed of aluminum and silicon. Looking at the materials that the engine was made up of, they got to know that the abradable material in the intermediate pressure compressor, or IPC, was made up of the very two same materials. As you know, an engine has a bunch of turbines in it. These turbines are encapsulated in a shell or a casing of sorts. The casing has these grooves in them that the blades can move through. To make the engine as efficient as possible, the space between the casing grooves and the blades must be minimized. This is to lower the backflow of air, which can reduce efficiency of the engine. So the grooves are filled with an abradable material that the blades can sort of rub up against. When they looked at the rotor paths, they saw that the abradable lining was making a lot of contact with the rotors when the engine was in motion. But this was only on stages 3 and 6. All the other stages showed normal wear and tear. With that, the investigators had an idea as to what caused all of the problems on flight 836. Stages 3 and 6 of the intermediate pressure compressor was making more contact with the abradable material than was expected. This released a fine dust of aluminum and silicon into the engine. Eventually, the dust made it deep enough into the engine that the dust ignited in the engine, disrupting the airflow. The disruption in the airflow caused multiple surges in the engine. The EEC, or the Electronic Engine Controller, was programmed to detect surges and recover from them. So when the surges happened, the EEC would pull back power, and then when the surges were gone, it would reinstate power, which caused the surges to happen again. This is why both engines experienced surges back to back to back. But with all of that, we still have one final question to answer. Why did the blades and the abradable material come into contact? Well, more than usual, that is. Well, we don't know the exact answer for that question, but we have a few good theories. One is that the case of the engine shrunk when it came into contact with ice crystals and supercooled water that was sucked into the engine. I mean, the weather that flight 836 was flying through was perfect for this sort of thing to happen. Another theory is that the rotors stretched just a tiny bit when they were spinning around in the engine, or the rotors could have been vibrating just a bit that caused them to make contact with the casing. Well, for whatever reason, contact was made, and that nearly took out two engines of an A330. In your opinion, which is the most likely scenario? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. After this accident, Singapore Airlines decided that on all of its newly delivered A330s, one engine would be replaced with an older engine that was, well, more worn in. That, in my opinion, is quite ironic. An older part being added for reliability reasons. You don't see that a whole lot. Usually, it's the other way around. 
Not many planes can claim to have almost lost both its engines. Well, Flight 836 can, and she lived to tell the tale. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.